There are a lot of questions and myths surrounding the largest meteorite fall in modern human history. In this clip, I will tell you all about the Tunguska event. So, stay with me, subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell, welcome to all. Maybe you didn't know, but every year on June 30th, we celebrate what is called Asteroid Day. It may not be as relevant as Christmas or Easter, but it is still a very important international day of remembrance because it takes place every year on June 30th, the date on which the Tunguska event probably happened in. It is one of the most blatant asteroid events in human history, and yet, we know almost nothing about it. The whole of eastern Russia is not really very populated. It was in this Siberian desert where some indigenous peoples like the Avinks live but where there are only queens who curse and trees that a real event occurred in 1908. An asteroid about 200 meters in diameter entered the Earth's atmosphere. It is then called a meteor. Somewhere before crashing to the ground, it must have exploded. Hundreds of thousands of smaller meteors then crashed to the surface of the Earth devastating an area of 2,000 square kilometers and destroying and probably knocking over more than 60 million trees. So really an event of almost apocalyptic magnitude. The only problem is that firstly in 1908 there was obviously not a global media outlet like today. That is, first of all, nobody really noticed it, and secondly, there are almost no people living there except for a few reindeer. It is still not certain that there were any human casualties. Some sources say that three people died, but most sources say that in reality only reindeer and trees were damaged and no people. And that is precisely because there are almost no people living there. If this thing had hit Tokyo, for example, or Berlin, we would have had millions of deaths. Would it happen in Tokyo, for example? If it had hit or passed over Berlin, we would have had millions of deaths. With this level of devastation, the Tunguska event is the most devastating meteorite impact in modern human history. Of course, from a prehistoric point of view, there have been much worse events. Just think of the poor dinosaurs or something like that where many species went extinct but not all. But in modern human history, it was the most incredible meteorite impact there has been. And yet, we know so little about it, especially because it is impossible to explore it today because there is no crater, at least most likely. How come a meteor 200 meters in diameter does not leave a crater once it hits? It is probably because this Tunguska meteor had a very low density, that is to say a very porous rock that then flies up into the atmosphere and breaks up. This means that the thing did not arrive at the base in its entirety. We would then have a giant crater like for example the Behringer Crater in Arizona in the United States. But since it had already broken up in the atmosphere, it was only a lot of small projectiles that hit the Earth and it was not big enough to create a crater. However, the energy of this impact, the atmospheric friction and all that probably created a column of heat and it bent all the trees. Despite the small population, it is obvious that some people noticed that something happened and not just the reindeer. In a Siberian village a few hundred kilometers away, the inhabitants saw a 20 kilometers high column of fire. They must have thought that it was now the end of the world and the shock wave triggered by the Tunguska event traveled at the speed of sound on the surface of the earth and could be measured by seismographs in different countries. After about four hours for example, the shock wave from the Tunguska reached France where it was measured. The geologists of the time already knew that something was happening and a Russian geologist named Kulig made an expedition there but did not find any craters for the reasons I have just described. Even the German airship Graf Zeppelin flew over Siberia specially to find the crater but no luck because there is no crater. Then the Second World War came and the study of the event was no longer a high priority logically. But today, geologists are looking at the matter again and are still wondering what really happened. The absence of a crater can be explained by the fact that the meteor exploded in the atmosphere. But why are no pieces of the meteor found? So far, no one has found a stone in the whole region that definitely came from space. It is a bit strange because in principle this stuff should be scattered there. And that's why there are now some other hypotheses. 
For example, some geologists claim that there was a huge volcanic eruption or some kind of gas bubble under the Earth's surface that exploded. That could be the case, but that wouldn't explain the 20 kilometers high jet of fire because you don't usually get such a powerful jet during such geological events. That's why most researchers still assume that it was a meteor. We've even found some candidates for possible small craters because it's possible that the meteor broke up in smaller pieces that hit, for example the so-called lake in the area, that could be a small impact crater, but of course we're not sure. And as always, when there is uncertainty about such events and no hypothesis can really be confirmed, very wild hypotheses emerge and here we really find all sorts of things. Some people say that we had a primordial black hole, which is a very, very light black hole that went through the earth and maybe caused an earthquake. Extreme in Tunguska. Others say that it was of course aliens. The aliens flew to Earth and then bent 60 million trees and went home. There are really all sorts of theories. So there's also an episode of The X-Files that takes place in Tunguska and the myth has also made its way into the world of video games. In the game Borderlands 2, you can find a pug launcher called Tunguska. So the Tunguska event has had a lasting influence on pop culture. We celebrate Asteroid Day, Asteroid Day not to have fun on the day of the Tunguska event of course, but to raise awareness that something like this can be incredibly dangerous because it can threaten millions of people. The statistical probability that a new Tunguska event will happen one day is huge. And as I said at the beginning, if it happens over a big city, then we really have a dramatic event. That's why the asteroid should remind us that we should really be better prepared for such asteroid or meteorite impacts. Because at that time, people were not yet after, even if they had rediscovered the Tunguska asteroid in advance, they would have had no chance to deflect anything. We could have just watched and hoped that it would crash into Siberia as it did. So, a blessing in disguise except for the reindeer. And now, in our time, we have an early warning system for asteroids, which means that we could very likely detect the thing. But the methods for deflecting asteroids are still very rudimentary, although there are some ideas. And another asteroid could soon approach Earth in a really threatening way. Where will it even crash? The asteroid Apophis divides the scientific community. NASA is sure that we will not be hit, but they may have forgotten a critical factor in their calculation. You will find all this in the video displayed at the top right, in the bar on the right. You will also find another exciting topic about space, space travel and science. Otherwise, I'll tell you until the next video. Good luck to all.